You're watching Car Babble. I'm Ewan, and this is 2017 Volvo V40 in our design prospect. And in this video, I'm going to try and answer the question of is this still a good car in 2022? Because it was actually discontinued in 2019 and replaced by the Volvo XC40. But you will actually find quite a few of these still on the road, so one would assume there's quite a few things that are actually really good about it. Well, I've been driving it for quite a while, and I've found quite a few little perks and quirks, and hopefully I can tell you something about it that you did not already know. So if you enjoyed my video, please do like and subscribe. There's a lot more coming up on the channel otherwise buckle up let's get into it oh and um a bird just shot my car now let's talk a bit about the history of this car because this car has been around since 2012 and it's been refreshed loads of times they've changed the naming conventions on the specs this one used to be like the R Design Nav Plus and stuff like that and now the latest one in 2019 before it was discontinued it was the R Design Edition there's loads of different ones, but the main specs are Momentum, which is the base spec, then you've got our design, which is this, and then you've got Inscription, which is meant to be the luxury spec, and then you can add the Pro Pack onto that, which will vary, but basically you get things like an electric seat, and maybe higher grade leather, and a slightly comfier seat, things like that, and then you can add in packs, and this has got a couple of decent options on it already. It's got the driver assistance pack and the Harman Car and Sound System, which I'll come back to, but this is very well specced now that it has all those things and this car with about 20 to 30 thousand miles on the clock in a 2017 model was between 13 and 16 grand that's what you would pay i paid 15 and a bit for it and yeah to have all that kit that's pretty good value for a premium car if you were to go for its rivals a bmw 1 series an audi a3 a mercedes a-class something like that to get that level of spec and that age of mileage, you would really struggle. So that is a really key point here. Now the R design spec also gives you a couple of things that really make it look sporty. And I also think this bursting blue metallic paint really, really works with R design, but that's my thoughts. Let me know yours. You get diamond cut 18 inch alloy wheels. You get these different colored wing mirrors and a few sporty aesthetics. And yeah, I think really it is quite a nice looking car. Again, let me know what you think. One thing I do not like, these. Water jet scooters. When you're in the car, they peek at you like nostrils, and I really don't know why they did that. But yeah, I don't really think that looks great, and it really makes the bonnet look a bit busy. Now let's have a look in the boot of the V40. No power tailgate, and uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a pretty square shape, but it's only 335 liters, and yeah, that's quite small compared to a lot of its rivals. So not amazing. Um, if you had the spare tyre, it would probably eat into space even more. This one doesn't have it. Um, and you've got a pretty nasty load lip uh, if you put the seats down. 60, 40 split folding seats. No through loading ski hatch or anything. You've got tie down points here, a couple of hooks. That's about it. So, rear seat space in the V40. I've seen better. Um, seats in my driving position, I'm five foot nine. I don't have a huge amount of knee room. My legs are a little bit crammed under the seat as well. Headroom's pretty good though, so that's all right. But yeah, it's a two seater back here at best and it's mainly for a couple of kids. If they're not in kids' child seats and they actually have to sit on these seats, they'll love them because they're super comfy just like the front. But yeah, if you had child uh, seats and they were like the other way facing, it would be, yeah, really, really tight. If even possible i'm not sure but you've got cup holder design down here that i really like and yeah the little teeth and it's not really deep but it's just a really great place for kids to put their drinks from there and then you've got uh, an armrest which is an armrest funnily enough uh, and then you've got isofix of fix and outer seats and you've got these pockets in the back of the seats door bin po uh, pockets are oh, yeah yeah they're really not very big they're not felt lined either so if a kid's playing with their leg or something that's rattling about definitely uh, and these windows, they kind of narrow towards the back, so they're not amazing for visibility for kids. Um, no connectivity, no air vents, not much else to tell you really. So we're up front in the Volvo V40 and it is very Volvo in here. In fact, it's just like every other Volvo of the same generation. You won't really notice much difference unless you've driven lots of them, which I have. So I have found a few subtle changes and yeah, definitely where they've cheaped out in a couple of areas in the V40, but we'll come back to that. But all the things that should be good are pretty good. Quality, everything's fairly soft and squidgy where you might touch it. A few hard plastics, but they're not ones you're going to touch very often. Leather, soft armrest on the door here is really good. You can hold the wheel really nicely there. Feel really quite comfortable doing that. This side not as great. This does slide forward and back, which you won't get in like the V60 and S60 versions of this car. And it, you do kind of slide off the end of it, though it kind of like slopes down, so that's not great but you can just about reach the steering wheel. And yeah, the steering wheel itself is 
the right thickness, but it's kind of a shiny leather and it's a bit slippy and yeah, it just doesn't feel soft and squidgy to hold. But then there is the seats and of course, Volvo seats are the bomb. Uh, this one is no different. Our design are the best seats because they hug you in the best, really soft leather. And this one being the Prospect has electric seats for the driver and three position memory. Manual lumbar support, which is a little bit naff, and that one's also got manual lumbar support, but yeah, you still at least have it, but it's a very comfortable position, and you could do lots of miles in here and not get out of the other end feeling like, uh. But storage is mixed. You've got uh, pretty small door bins. They're not felt lined either, so things will rattle about in there. I really don't like it when cars don't have those. You've got really good cup holders, though. One's deeper than the other, and they're well, really adaptable. I love this sort of design of these little rubbery bits to hold your drink in place. Really works well. You've got a center armrest that you can get loads of stuff in there, and it's uh, yeah, it's pretty deep. It's it's fine. Um, you've got this floating console here where you can put your glasses behind, and thankfully you've got that because mm, no nothing up there. Um, but yeah, that's about it for storage. Oh, glove box. Yep, pretty big. I'm pretty happy with that. New Revolvos, special electric ones, don't have as good a glove box as that. So that's something that, yeah, you will get plenty of stuff in there. Now, there is a few things that on the V40 they cheaped out on that they didn't do in the V60 and the S60 and up. And that is things like, well, one, you have a manual handbrake still. And yeah, it's, it, it, it kind of sticks up like a massive erection when it's in park. I really don't like that. It feels like it's literally vertical. It's... Uh, yeah, it's not great, but something that they've done, and this is, if you've got OCD, and I've got real OCD, not this flicking the lights on and off a couple of times sort of OCD, real OCD, and yeah, so this is a real problem for me, but I think it would bother most people. The whole center console faces away from the driver, and there's a very obvious reason for this. It's because they cheaped out on making this car for the British market and for right-hand drive cars. So, yeah, it's all set up to be for a wheel on that side of the car, and there isn't a wheel on that side of the car, it's there. Um, so, yeah, everything's tilting away from the driver, and that is really annoying. It makes the screen feel smaller than it is, and it's just like, it's it's, it's all facing away from the driver. Like, wh what on earth is that all about? Really poor from Volvo for doing that. That's a major cost-cutting initiative there. And I don't know if too many people have really ever pointed that out in car reviews, so you heard it here first. You're not getting a frameless rear view mirror here like you do in other uh, Volvos of this generation, so they've cheaped out there. And yeah, it's it's uh, this, the gear stocks are a bit cheap feeling, but I feel like that about the other Volvos I've been in as well. So that's not something that their quality has really resonated with. Um, but mm, yeah, they've definitely cut a couple of wee corners here that are quite subtle and if you don't drive a lot of Volvos you might miss them. One other thing that's really annoying and it's something that the other Volvos have been in haven't had this issue with, but the, you have to put your key in to start it. There's no keyless entry, there's no keyless start, which I thought it would have in the Pro Spec in 2017 when other Volvos like the V60 had. But yeah, they've cheaped out on that as well. But when you put your key in, if you have other keys on your key ring, they knock against the metal of the surround of the aircon. And that is really, really annoying. Um, yeah, it, it constantly does it. And yeah, I don't know what to do with that. It's just a bad design. I'm going to have to put some sort of padding around there or something, but it just really isn't great. So yeah, nice one, Volvo. But the infotainment system, I think it gets a lot more stick than it deserves this whole generation of Volvo infotainment, or at least laterally in its, in its life. Um, I still think it's a good infotainment system and yeah, you've, you've got a digital cockpit as well, but everything is so easy to get around. You don't have a scroll wheel down here like you do in a BMW, but this little joystick scroller here and this exit button changes everything. You can do everything through these two controls. Scroll, press, exit, back. Amazing. And so almost everything you can do in the screen, you can do just by doing that and you're fine. So I find it really intuitive, very simple. All the buttons are so nicely damped in the steering wheel. You've got your adaptive cruise here and your skip tracks, volume, voice control, and voice control works really well on Volvos, and this one's no different. Everything's fine on that front, obviously. It's an older car. There's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but yeah, yeah, it's it's still a really, really good simplistic infotainment system, so I'm pretty happy with it from that point of view. You also get some really good winter driving related stuff with the uh, Volvos of old, and uh, yeah, this one has the winter pack, so you've got heated seats, you got heat windscreen, I love my heated windscreen, and you've got heat water wash jets, and yeah, everything, everything in winter just feels easy. You get in the car, you're like, oh, it's, it's frozen, press the button, boom, 
all good within a few seconds so that's something that every car should have and i know they don't but volvo have always been good at that obviously swedish car maker and it's pretty cold there in the winter but yeah they've got a really good winter game climate controls are very easy to use and there's a lot of buttons on this center console um, but they are, yeah, they're very simple, as I say, very retro, but they, they work, you know, you want to put a postcode in, just press the buttons and you'll, it'll do really quickly for you. Everything is simple. Once you get the muscle memory of it, you know where things are and it's really quite easy to find things. So all in all, just find this whole system just so easy to use. Now, this car has some options on it. One is the driver assistance pack, which includes all the things you'd expect in a modern car. And this is what I think as an, as a used car from five years ago, you will find very few hatchbacks that have the option of a driver assistance pack and one that's as good and comprehensive and actually works as much as this one. This has got adaptive cruise control, it's got collision warning, it's got rear cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, the whole shoot match. Oh yeah, and you can switch off your lane keep permanently. Whew. But yeah, it's got all of that and the, and the adaptive cruise control really works well. You set that up and you go and it doesn't really ever miss a beat. Volvo is fantastic for that and they've been way ahead of the game. There is a lot of newer cars than this that have way less reliable tech when it comes to safety equipment. So I would say that's a massive win for this car. If you can find one of these used that has that option pack, I would really recommend getting it. You'll notice the ones that do have it just by looking at the front. There's that little box at the front and that's where the sensors are. So look out for that if you're shopping for one. Now this car has one other option on it, which is a very rare option in the used car market of the V40. And it's the upgraded Harman Kardon sound system. And the way you can tell it's got that is there is a speaker on the dash here and it says Harman Kardon on it as well, which always helps. But if it you don't have that sound system, there's no speaker on the dash, unlike in the V60 and S60 where there is one on the dash. Now, that's an important point because the standard sound system in those cars was absolutely fabulous. And the upgraded sound system in the V40 is about the same as those. So I would really like to know if the standard sound system in the V40 is way less good than that or not, because I'm not sure if it was money well spent to have uh, to, to really shop around for one that had that, because very few cars had that option, but I really wanted it because I love my tunes. But I am really not seeing a major improvement in sound over the standard system in the other cars. So yeah, I'd love to know if that extra speaker and that slightly better amp and things have made that much difference. So if anybody knows in the comments, they've got the standard sound system in the V4A. Let me know what you think of it because, yeah, I don't know if they're really doing anything special with the sound system. So maybe not an option that you really necessarily need to go for if you can at least test drive one that doesn't have it and you think, mm, yeah, that sounds pretty good still. Personally, I wish I'd got one with a pan roof instead along with the driver assistance pack because those are the two options I think that are going to resell the car at the best value. But anyway, it's got that and yeah, I'm still chuffed to have a slightly good sound system. So we're out on the road in the Volvo V40 T3, which is a 1.5 turbocharged petrol engine with 150 PS and 250 newton meters of torque. And after the gearbox kicks down, this is a six-speed auto, uh, which takes about the same amount of time as it takes to make a cup of tea to do so. Uh, yeah, it's got quite a lot of power, um, 0 to 60 in 7.9 seconds, which is really quite good for a 1.5. Yeah, um, torque is excellent as well. I really feel like this has got a lot of low down pulling power. In fact, it almost feels like a diesel. It's really good for that. You do get the T2, which is a lower displacement petrol, and you also get a D2 and D3 diesel. All the specs I will put up on the screen right now for you. But yeah, let's focus on this one because I think this is the one to go for in the range if fuel economy isn't your bag because it's not very good. 35 MPGs I've roughly been averaging over all driving over quite a long period of time. I've had it lower than that as well. It doesn't get much above that no matter what I do. And yeah, if you go over a lot of country roads and hills, it could be nearer 38 points in sport mode. And I always leave in sport mode because you only get a digital speedo in sport mode. I don't know what that's all about, but I'm not really sure why if you don't want to drive in sport mode, you shouldn't be allowed to see a digital speedo. That to me is a bit weird. But anyway, yeah, that's the reason why I do that. But um, I do find this to be a particularly good punchy little engine so I'm really impressed with it from that point of view but yeah the trade-off seems to be that the fuel economy is absolute tosh however other driving dynamics to talk about aren't quite so good um, first of all yeah it, it's it's quite stiffly set up the suspension because it's the R design so you do feel the bumps but it's not terrible 
It doesn't roll that much in the corners, but this chassis is a real problem and I find the weight and the balance is all over the shop when you turn it into a bend and it's got loads of understeer, runs out of grip really fast and yeah, I'm really just finding it's just kind of all over the place and it just means you don't want to drive this car fast around the corner at all. I'm actually though really quite surprised at how bad it is though and I'd like to caveat that by saying that it is possible that it's this car specifically because this is a 2017 car, it's a five year old car and yeah, there could be something wrong with it that I'm not aware of. So. I'd love to know in the comments if somebody else has similar experiences or completely disagrees with me because that could be the reason. However, basing my review on this car, yeah, I'm, I'm really finding it drives pretty badly. And I'm comparing that to the V60 and the S60 of the same generation of Volvo, which probably came out of the same factory and had all the same dynamics and engines and everything being very much set up to be the same. I cannot understand why this drives worse than a diesel V60. I really don't know why. A diesel has a bigger, heavier engine, so it's more nose heavy, and it's a bigger car. Um, so yeah, I expected a hatchback with a petrol engine to be lighter on its feet and just be a bit more nimble, and I am really not finding that. So yeah, that's why I'm wondering is there something wrong with this car, because really I thought it would be a little bit sharper to drive this. I wasn't expecting it to be a Ford Focus or a Honda Civic. I I don't know what I was expecting, but I just thought it would be a little bit better than this. So that is my main issue with this car, is on a country road, it's not good. Otherwise though, visibility is good. You know, it's a hatchback, so you can see pretty well out the back. Um, the A pillars are quite wide, and so you can do that a little bit, but otherwise visibility is good. I don't hear a lot of wind noise coming across the wing mirrors and stuff, so that's fine, but there is a lot of tire noise. But yeah, generally, sound insulation in this car isn't too bad, but it is a Volvo, and yeah, I think they're pretty good at that sort of stuff. But yeah, the V40 gearbox uh, is not great. Um, I'm really not impressed with it. When you're going up the gears, it's, it's okay, but um, when you're kicking down, yeah, there's a lot of lag and a lot of jerkiness. And if you're in cruise control or adaptive cruise as this has, um, and you're going up a hill on like a dual carriageway or something, and it needs to kick down, you really notice it kicking down. It's really jerky and not smooth. So they've not done a good job with this gearbox. Some Volvos do get an eight speed and it is a better gearbox for sure. But yeah, coming back to the fuel economy, I mean, this is a five-year-old car and it was discontinued in 2019. Uh, and you know it was around a lot longer than that before it so it's not a new car it's not going to be the most efficient petrol engine you can get out of there and that's where you will notice it probably differs from some of its newer competitors that were maybe the, you know the new model came out around 2017 like Volkswagen's 1.5 TSI petrol is definitely more economical than this you'll get at least 40 miles per gallon average out of that so that's quite a big difference but performance of this 1.5 is definitely good and I think that's maybe part of the reason why you do notice uh, the MPGs are a little bit compromised because yeah it does feel like it's got a bigger engine almost than a 1.5 so yeah a bit of a trade-off there but for me I would have liked to have seen a little bit higher than 35 MPGs average. So final thoughts on the Volvo V40. Well, I think in our design spec, it's the best looking version of it. If you Google the other models, you'll realize that yeah, the sporty look does definitely do favors. It's just a shame it doesn't have sporty driving characteristics to match it. In fact, they are particularly disappointing to the point of really being a bit of a shock for me given that I've driven so many Volvos before. I really did not expect it to be as bad to drive as this. However, the performance is very pleasing for a 1.5 petrol and the torque especially, but yeah, 35 miles per gallon isn't great, especially in 2022. People are looking for much more efficient engines than that. So if you're looking for one of these, you need to think, mm, what other cars around the same price point are you gonna get that have way better fuel economy as a hatchback? Because often that's one of the most important things for people. But the seats are amazing. You will not get any car that's a hatchback under 50 grand with seats as comfy as that. They are very high spec executive seats and the driver assistance pack is very good for its age. So there are good things about this car, but it's not a complete package for me and a really good all round package. But those are my thoughts. I would love to know yours. So please do leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.